So I've just opened up my emails and seen this really exciting one from my college next year. It's basically the summer reading list for everything we need to do before we start. So what better video for this week than to look at exactly what I have to do and how I'm going to prepare. I guess the grind to university really starts now. So let's actually have a look at exactly what the email attachment is saying. To Sam Kramer, Course 1C. First of all, that line is brilliant. I love the fact they're already calling me Sam because officially I'm Samuel. I think Isabel actually wrote to me saying Samuel because I guess that's just an automated thing. But it's really nice that uh, they're right, writing to me as Sam. That makes me feel very warm and fuzzy inside. Congratulations again on receiving an offer of a place at Trinity. We are looking forward to seeing you here in autumn. The first parts of this are just the introduction, not too important. But I think the interesting bit starts about here where they tell us we're expected to read both the Iliad and the Odyssey in translation before we start. This was completely expected and I've done both of those already so I'm not too worried about that. So far I'm feeling confident, uh, seems very reasonable. Then they start to talk about the specific translations they recommend. That's something that I've never quite got. Some people on the Classics chat love to talk about, oh what's your favourite translation of this? Oh I really enjoyed this one. Never personally been interested in that, so I've just got the penguin ones that I have here. Here's my Odyssey, for example, and I don't think it's the recommended one, um, but I'm not too worried. Just read this one. I don't really see how much of a difference it makes. Next, it says they were expected to read both Book 1 and Book 24 of the Iliad in the original Greek. I haven't actually done either of those, but again, I'm not too worried because I've been reading some of the other books in Greek so far, so I'm on the right lines, and when the time comes, I'll read book 1 and 24, because I will have enough time to do a few more books, and I'll make sure I do those. Again, I was really happy to see this, because I'd seen on some other lists, I'm not sure if they're unofficial or old or what, you have to read like six books or something. Uh, books are basically chapters in this case, so, you know, a few hundred lines of Greek, something like that. But here, to see there's only two that I've got to read, that was really good news. Although I guess on the other hand, it just means we'll have to do more later, because eventually we have to read all the books, that is to say, the whole Iliad, so, you know, pros and cons. I mean, look at this for example. This is from Balliol, it's just something I found online. It says, you must read at least four, and preferably seven books of the Iliad in Greek before you come up. And so actually, to see that actually it's just two in reality, makes me feel pretty good. Maybe the course might be slightly calmer than I, I, I was worried about. Then this bit here, we have to read Herodotus's histories, I haven't read that, I've looked at parts of it, but again, that's just one in English which you can read, so I'm not too worried about that. And then we talk about the Latin. I'm doing course 1C, which again it says right at the top. 1C means Greek without Latin. Very rare, right? Because most people who do Greek will have done Latin, and if you only do one, it's way more common to have learned Latin. So I might be the only one out of all the people doing classics on this. Sometimes there's only one a year. Um, but they've obviously got my specific Latin things, which is beginner's Latin and they say they'll send us more notes about this in the future, uh, but I'm not too worried about this again because I've got GCSE Latin, I've been doing a bit, so I look forward to seeing what they're saying, but I'm doing my own work in preparation for what they'll send me and tell me to do. You will hear from the university language teaching team about the preparation for learning Latin that you expect to do this summer, so that's something to look forward to, something to come. Then we move over to the second page. This is more general about classics, not necessarily just the language stuff. Any other general reading that you can do about Greece and Rome will come in useful if you have time to fit it in. They've got a long list here, but I'm not sure how much I'll read because it's way more important to be understanding the languages because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how much you understand the English. When you get the Greek in front of you, you have to be able to read it. So here we've got some stuff, and maybe I'll focus on the Roman history and the Roman literature, to be honest, because that's something I don't know much about. I'm relatively familiar with Greek stuff because that's the one I've done, and so I've actually done some of this in advance. You know, I've read Ajax, Bacchae, Trojan Women, stuff like that. But the Roman stuff is probably something I will look at. You might want to start with Virgil's Aeneid, which is a book here I got from my aunt. And you might be able to see, um, I've been making some notes on it, on some of the pages. Uh, just light notes of exactly what's happening. So again, I know this is one of the important texts, so I've started with it already. Similarly, for my birthday, I got SPQR which is A History of Ancient Rome, which I'm about half the way through. I read it all quite quickly and then I stopped. I think I might be at the bit where it's the Republic's just ended and it's going to become an empire, but I'll make sure to read the second half and probably go over the first half again, because this is a good general understanding of, you know, the timelines and stuff like that. So I put my bookmark back in for this, and yeah, I'm sure I'll be coming back to this book soon. Finally, this was a nice thing to see at the end. 
the college will give you up to £100 back each academic year for books that you've bought. I think you'll probably buy way more than £100 a book, but it's something, so if I buy anything else, I'll make sure to keep the receipts as they write involved. Overall, how am I feeling about this? I'm feeling a bit calmer. I was pretty nervous so far about how hard the course will be, and I read this Balliol stuff again, which talks about how much you have to do, but actually, this seems very reasonable, so I'm looking forward to continuing my work. I feel happy that the work I've done so far since I found it in January, you know, in the last four months or so, has been on the right lines, and I'll carry on pushing forward.